All right. So today we're going to be talking about homes in forbearance. Does that necessarily equal an increase of foreclosures coming down the line? And the reason why we have this topic right now is because we're getting asked this question every other day, it feels like, if not every day. Um, you know, there's buyers that are looking to buy right now that might be concerned of something happening down the future or sellers that have plans of putting their home on the market next spring that may have concerns. So what all we're bringing you today are factual information and expert opinions. Absolutely. In fact, we are some of this information we're getting with the uh, number of homes in forbearance, which, as we know, is essentially putting your mortgage on pause. And from what we know, uh, the way the forbearance programs are currently working is you can do that for up to 180 days and get a, up to a 180 day extension. And uh, that reason being for that is a lot of folks are in a better place now than they were six months ago and have all actually reinstated paying back the mortgage because we have to realize the forbearance is basically a kicking the can down the road. It's not a forgiveness. It's just a pause button. So why don't we pull up our graph that actually will lend some, uh, put some light on this and show us the facts uh, nationwide, what the forbearance situation is looking right, uh, looking like right now. And we can see this is quite current. It actually takes us right up to the end of September of this year. And we can see you know, right here in blue and orange, the number of mortgage inactive forbearance is decreasing. And uh, we thank our um, our folks at Keeping Current Matters for providing this information for us. Lane, why don't you put some uh, some meaning to these uh, bar graphs here? Sure. As you can see, we have a downward trend. Actually, it's gone down a little bit even more. We have a couple articles from uh, Keeping Current Matters and the Mo and the Motley Fool. Uh, they're falling below three million, and this is the first time it's been this low since mid-April. So that's a that's good news that a lot of uh, mortgages and active forbearance are going down. Originally, experts thought when all this is going down that 30% of homeowners were going to choose to put their homes in forbearance. And actually, it ended up being 10%. And now we're almost about half of what it was when it initially happened. So a lot of the people, I, I'd say about a quarter of the, of the homeowners, um, from what we've read, that have their homes in active forbearance are still current on their mortgages right now as well. Very interesting. And what we, what Lane and I want to make clear is we know our market audience here and most of you folks that are listening and uh, hopefully getting value from this are here in Orange County or adjacent to Orange County, California. And these are national statistics. We don't have the specific numbers for Orange County, but what we do know is typically speaking, Orange County fares better than the rest of the nation when regards to this type of information. So we feel this is a good arbiter and a good number that we can definitely feel we're in not any worse than this, if not probably a little bit better. Yes, you're exactly right. And we're in a little we're in a situation now or a scenario now that's a lot different than the last great recession that we had. Like the last great recession was a real estate related recession. The reason why we're in a recession right now is pandemic related, not necessarily real estate related. Plus there's also some things that are available to homeowners today that weren't available then. Like for example, loan modifications, short sales, uh, those didn't come up until late in the crisis and during the Great Recession. So those things, including forbearance that we're talking about right now, are available to homeowners today to help you know have people stay in their homes for a little bit longer. Also, uh, the, what we call strategic defaults. So there was a time during the Great Recession when uh, people were underwater on their homes. Their homes uh, they owed more than what their homes were worth, and they just walked away on purpose. And then the bank took over those homes, and those were called strategic defaults. So with the vast majority of homeowners today having equity in their home, and that might be a good uh, segue to our next slide. But a lot of people have an equity in their home; they're not underwater, and so they're not going to purposely walk away from their mortgage. So there's gonna be less strategic defaults. Let's yeah. talk about that for a minute, Lane, before our slide shows up. So we look at our topic here as will forbearance equal foreclosure. One thing we have to understand by definition, the bank forecloses on a home when a homeowner has decided they no longer can afford to live there and they're in a negative equity position. So they walk away. Negative equity position means they owe more on the home than it's worth. So back to Lane's question for a moment or topic a moment ago, um, strategic modifications, uh, short sales. Uh, those are things, again, that help people when they are underwater. But the topic that we have for today, which a lot of potential buyers are saying is, should we wait because we think there's going to be a flood of foreclosures on the market, which is going to bring prices down and give us more buying options? That what we feel is probably not going to happen based on what we saw with the uh, decreasing number of homes in forbearance, meaning again, forbearance is just a pause on the mortgage, but the next slide is really gonna show us who's got equity in the house and who doesn't. Yeah, let's put up that slide because you're gonna see that, I think it's over 92%, uh, yeah, 92.7% 92 
of homeowners have at least 10% equity in their homes right now. So their chances are if they fall into a situation where they can no longer afford their house payment or their mortgage payment, they're going to be a seller. There's a higher chance they're going to be a seller than for the bank to overtake that home. Exactly. As we look at this, and we've had the chance to study it a little bit, and for our viewers, we hope that you can see the slide pretty clearly. The focus is on the uh, the two blue and the two green uh, pie, uh, pieces specifically. That represents over 85% of the uh, homeowners in the United States, and that those numbers are added, aggregate up to showing 20% or more in homeowner equity. So, and we can take that even further into the into the 93 plus percent have over 10 percent equity so even if and lane did some great numbers we were talking about this before the show is let's say even if you were in forbearance and you were able to pause your mortgage payments for up to a year based on average mortgage prices and and rates and payments in the united states that would still only eat up about half of that if you were at the 10 percent stage so you'd still have five percent so kind of no matter how you look at this, everyone or a lot of people really have significant equity in their homes. And again, that's what keeps homes selling on the normal marketplace and not in foreclosure. It doesn't mean that there might be some hardships for folks that do need to sell, but their home would enter the marketplace in the normal manner and just add to the current inventory. And, and the piece of the pie that I'm actually looking at that I'm impressed with is that 100% homeowner equity. That's 40. That's the biggest piece of pie there, 42.1% and climbing. So we're getting closer and closer to half half of homeowners in the United States having 100% equity in their homes. No, and that's a great stat too, Lane. When we look at that, we think, okay, so uh, that means that people are going to be much uh, more um, prepared to weather the weather a little bit of financial storm a little bit of a downturn because we know the uh, the housing expense is the biggest piece of most people's month, monthly budget so if we do look at those numbers that's a big big thing that we need to be thinking about and again we think this is uh, kind of just shedding light on this whole issue because i'll say you know from 33 years uh, doing this we've had our ups and downs and it's uh, like timing the stock market timing the market to sell or buy for most of my clients' experiences has not definitely worked out for the best. It's more timing their life experience. Lane, what are your thoughts on that? No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, one, uh, and just recapping everything, what you're gonna see is hopefully with continued job growth will be a steady decline in homes that are currently in forbearance. And that's what we're actually seeing. That's why we're at low, like low since mid-April. So hopefully we can continue to see these trends. And it's also encouraging to know a huge chunk of the homes that are in forbearance right now are still current on their mortgages. And 92.7% of homeowners nationally have more than 10% equity. So everybody's sitting in a relatively, I mean, obviously this isn't the ideal situation to be in, but I don't think we're in a 2008 situation right now either. So, Lane, as we wrap up this topic, what would be our advice or our message to the buyers out there that have been posing these questions to us, saying, gosh, should we wait? We think there's going to be a lot of foreclosures on the market. What would be our, our nugget of advice that we could give these folks today as we as we wrap up this topic? To home buyers, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, to, to home buyers, I think you want to take advantage of the low interest rates. I think in our morning huddle this morning, our team member, Philip, made a great comment of if, let's say, um, home prices did increase, uh, continue to increase over time, uh, but maybe the interest rate did too, six months from now, and it's a little bit higher, take advantage of the low interest rate. They're at historic lows right now to the point where a lot of folks that are buying uh, their mortgage payments are less than what they can rent that particular home for. So, and, and when you lock into a 30 year fixed, as long as you have a steady income and a stable job, no matter behind the scenes, what home prices are doing, um, obviously you want to continue to build equity, but if, if it's a five to 10 year plan or more, you're going to be just fine with job stable growth because nobody's ever lost money uh, in an eight year cycle in real estate either. So uh, as long as you, whenever you're looking for a home, lock into an uh, interest rate and be comfortable with the home that you select, knowing that, hey, I might be here for eight to 10 years or more. I love that. And you know what? It's, and I, I just love to uh, go with one of these comments that we make to our buyers. We want you to love your neighborhood when you turn into it every day on the way home from work and love your home when you turn into the driveway every day. That's what it's all about is to, to love your home and be comfortable with the payment and not worry too much about the fluctuations up and down. Because as Lane said, what I love is no one's lost money over an eight year cycle. 
Yeah, and economically, real estate's actually followed uh, the the uh, unemployment rate and job growth a little bit more, like more so than any other uh, index that you would want to follow. So I'd keep an eye on job growth. We want to see, we want to continue to see steady job growth, especially as hopefully over time things can begin to open up again and jobs start to come back. So take a look at that because uh, obviously a continued decrease in unemployment will may. Uh, will maybe also continue to decrease um, the mortgage, the homes and mortgage forbearance. Yep. All right. As always, if you have any additional questions on any of the topics that we're discussing, please leave them in the comments section below or message us privately and we'll definitely help you out.